I'm here with Galol and I'm here to tell you some lovely stories and to go through some words with you all. So I hope you learn something. I hope you read along with me if you have them at home. And if anybody does want any of the books, you can always contact us at Galol on Facebook and these are also available on, on Amazon. So the first story we're going to look at today is part of this collection of books. So this collection of short stories has about three stories in it that talks all about the animal, the warabe. Does anybody know what a warabe is? That's right, it's a hyena. So in Somali folklore, we learn a lot about hyenas. They're scavenger animals and they're not very well liked because they'll take your animals and they'll eat your food without you looking. So a lot of the times they end up being the losers of stories. In today's story, we're going to look at how a warabe divides up the portion of food for all of the animals in the kingdom. Are you ready? This story is called Dirbahda Daban Durwe. So in Somali, you can say warabe for hyena, but also you can say durwe. And this is a really nice poetic title. Can you hear all the dut 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 sounds in the title? That means the slap the hyena took. Peri ba haber dugag or dan hal wada kashen. Markasa li ba amre durwa. War durwario. Kali hilba hyeno kaybi. Durwa ba sikal sani leh uyiri. Hasha ma bad misa bad. Bad li ba pale. But Kakalana, Habertugaga Kalo, Kuheshia. Wuhu Kaib Huma, a Yuli Bako do they? Into the Baha Mugle, Pap Durwa Cassie, a Yu Il Kagaso Tore, Durwa O Hanula Ildaran, a yard done Ulu they. So in this first part, let me just translate it in English. There was a camel, Hull is a female camel. And there was a camel that got slaughtered that all the animals were supposed to share. But the lion is the king of all the animals in the savannah. So lion said, come to Durwa, to our hyena, and said to Durwa, listen, I want you to sort it out and distribute it amongst all the animals. So hyena thought he was being fair and he thought he was being deferential. And he said to Lebeh, which is lion, here you go, half is for you and half is the rest of all the animals. Libah, though, did not like that. He got very, very cross, and he ended up slapping Durwa in the face. So hard, with so much power, that Durwa's eye fell out of his head. Can you imagine how hard he must have slapped him? Libah, o weli adu araisan, aya uches dey habardugagi kalep. Marcaso Dawo Yerde, Naya Dayo. The Rock Ape Tea, Karam Way, I'll go Hilba Hakabi, a you umbre. Dawo Nathin Ugeridesa, a ya Kabin tea below day. Hilba Mabad Missa Bad Bad Bakora Wadale. In take Kor Uchela, they Liba Haye Kabin tea, Hilba Kasi Kusi Dirate, or see what they. So Lion, still really, really cross and really frustrated, looks at the rest of the animals that were all gathering around. And he looked and he thought, hmm, I'll talk to Fox. So he called Fox over and Fox, of course, seeing what happened to Durwa, was shaking with fear. Libah told Fox, come and sort this hull out. And Fox said, okay. Half of it belongs to you, Libah, and then continue to distribute. But Kaharena, Mawah, Miss Awah, Wah Libaho Adale, Wah the Kalana, Mafalad, Miss Fallad, Fallad Bokoro Adale. So she continued to distribute it. 
continuing to half it each time. So half went again to Libah, the lion. Another half again, we leave that. Half of that again went to lion. The other half still to be distributed. The entire animals in the kingdom were watching with awe and with shock at Fox and seeing how she was distributing the animal. How is she doing it? When is she going to stop? She's still going. She still continued. And she keeps speaking to Lion in this lovely tone. Half of that belongs to you, O King. Half of that belongs to you, King Lion. She keeps making sure that she lets Lion know that he is the powerful. So at the end, the meal was left, which is 1 over 32. So that is the fraction that was left of our camel. And she said, this tiny bit, 1 out of 32 pieces, belongs to the entire animal kingdom that was waiting for their food. What do you think Lion's response was? Libah into Adu Kosley. Are you Yuri Dayoi? Ya Kaibuanaga Kubarai. Fox's response. Dirba had a dub and Durwa Kutal Ayai Barte. Fox replied, the slap that's still on the Warabe, on Durwa's face, is my teacher. That is the end of that story. So let's look into it a little bit more. So, we learned in that story that a camel was slaughtered for all the animals to eat. But in the end, we were only left with one out of 32 pieces. You might have noticed that I used lots of different words to keep talking about how they halved and kept halving the process. Now, in English, we usually use those terms as fractions. But I'm just going to talk with you a little bit about the fractions themselves and what they actually, what the words were. So first we had bud. Bud, I think we all know, is half. So here we have a pie chart saying bud. And then we had wah. Does anybody know another name for wah? Or where a quarter is? Sometimes we say it in time. Yes, we say rubber. So when we're talking about the time, when it's a quarter past something, we say rubber, right? Now, in this story, we used wah. So this is another word for us talking about how we halved we halved that into wah, into a quarter. And then again, again, we had the fox still halving the process. So we had falad. Falad was the next term we used for an eighth. That's half of a quarter, one eighth. It's called falad. Then later on, we had rimer. Again, she halved it again into one sixteenth. Rimer. And then lastly, we had, do you remember the term? Meal. Meal was one out of 32. So can you imagine the tiny sliver of, of meat that the entire animal kingdom had to share and all of the meat that lion ate? Why do you think that was? Amazing, because Lion is the king of the jungle. And as the king of the jungle, he demands respect. Maybe that's why he slapped Durwa in the face. In a lot of Somali folklore, we think about the message that happens behind the story. And a lot of the times we use animals to talk about messaging. So let's look back at our story in the collection and see what this story actually was talking about. Well, today I'm going to look at and focus on the mistake of Durwa, because that is ultimately the lesson that Da'wa learnt. Remember Da'wa's last line, the slap on Durwa's face was my teacher, and that's how I learnt. We must always make sure that we try and learn from the mistakes of others. If you see people mucking around in the classroom and you think, let me join in, but you see that they get in serious trouble, 
you don't want to get in serious trouble right so that's the life lesson that we learn here today always learn from people's around you their previous mistakes because then that's how you get ultimate wisdom now the fox in Somali folklore is cunning she's smart she's wily and she tries to get her way as much as possible but Dudwa here again is clumsy is a bit savage is a bit you know it, it wants to get what it wants and then moves on it's all a bit clumsy looking so we're trying in Somali folklore to be more like the fox now maybe we should have conversations at home with you watching to see how we can learn from other people's mistakes how can we make sure their mistakes are not repeated excellent now as I said a lot of Somali folklore is focusing on animals so here we have a bunch of cards and I bring this with me every year so if you see me most years you'll see me carrying these cards because you can play so many games with these cards but what we're going to focus on a little bit today is animal names and seeing what we can think up and what we can look at in terms of animal names and the letters in the Somali alphabet so I've got some cards here with the letters of the alphabet on me and we're going to go through some of them so first we have W. W. And this is in the Somali alphabet. We use English letters, as you all know. And this is W. Can you think of any animal or any word, if you're stuck on animals, that start with the letter W? A popular answer I get every year that doesn't have anything to do with animals is always Wariya. Mm. Right? Your mum will always shout Wariya! That's right. So our example here is, I'm going to mess up the pronunciation, wheel, wheel. And that is a, a rhino. Excellent. And now we've got this letter, ch, ch. Some people say j and some people say ch. It's all okay. So can we think of any let any words that start with the letter ch in Somali? And now any animals that start with ch. This one's going to be a bit tough, I think. If you got chair, you are right. <laughs> so chair is, as you can see, a hippo. Excellent. And now let's think of another word that starts with the letter ra. Let's think of a normal word that starts with ra first. It doesn't have to be an animal, it can be anything. So on this card we have rob, rob, which is rainfall. But can we think of any animals that start with the letter R? If you said ri, you're correct. Ri, does anybody know what that means? Yell at the TV, yell at the computer what ri means. That's right. If you said goats, you are absolutely correct. Well done. And now we had an animal that starts with D in our story. Can you remember what animal started with D? Not D. D. Here's a hint. It was the fox's name. What is fox in Somali? Yes. Da'awa. You can say Dawa. You can also say Danier, which is a monkey. And you can also say Damer, which is a, it's a donkey. Well done. So we've got a lot of dirt words for animals, I think. And now we've got Sh. Same diagraph in English, but also in Somali it's Sh. So can we think of any animals that start with the letter Sh or the sound Sh? Okay, so we can have a couple of answers here, can't we? We can say Shabel, the cheetah. We can also say Shimbir, that flies high in the sky, the bird. Well done. And now this is another diagraph that appeared in our story. We've got D. So if you can see here, you've got DH to make the sound D. 
Can you think of any words that start with the letter D? And now any animals that start with the letter D? It was in our stories. Yes, well done. So the animal that we thought of was Durwa. Can you all remember the other name for Durwa? Hyena, the other name that we use in Somali. Well done, that's right, it's Warabe. Good job. Another word that you can think of with da is Dagah. Dagah, which as you can see is a rock or a stone. And now we've got a couple more left. Here we have G, G, G. Any words that start with G or any animals that start with G? Well, the one we have here is Gorayot, an ostrich. The fastest land animal after the cheetah. Ostrich, Gorayot. Any other G words you can think of? Discuss them. Now I've got the next letter for you. We have K. K. Can you think of any animals that start with K in Somali? Here's a hint, they live in the sea and the oceans and the rivers and the lakes. Yes, well done. Kalon. Kalon is a fish under the sea. Well done. The last card I have for you is not really an animal, but how we call animals as a group collective. So what's the word for animal in itself? We've got a couple of words that we use. We can say hayawan for all animals. I think we take that from Arabic language, but it's okay. Also, you can say holo for livestock. Can you think of what I mean by livestock? What kind of animals are specific to livestock? If you said cows, goats, sheep, you're right. It's all the animals that people typically take with them and that use for farming and use their resources. So we take milk, we can make our clothes from them. That's kind of what we mean by livestock. So holo in Somali would mean cows, goats, camels, and sheep. Well done, everybody. Are you all ready to listen to the next story? So now you learnt about Durwa and the mistake Durwa made with Lubah. You can learn more about stories about hyenas in this book. It's available on Amazon. And there's a collection of stories all about Durwa. And it's called Medirge Durwa. It means hyena is never satisfied. So now we're going to look more at the lion. A lion is a very popular animal in Somali folklore. What can you think? When you think about a lion, what associations do you make? What's the first word you think of? Brave, mighty, powerful, absolutely. All of those things and many more. A lot of the times we can say lion represents what a man is supposed to be in Somali folklore. And here we'll learn how a lion sometimes might behave quickly, too quickly, and that could be the ruin of it. This is called libah yudabagale. So we already know libah means lion. Does anyone know what the bagale means? It's a squirrel. This is one of my favorite stories because it's all about how the small man, how the less powerful animal can overtake and overcome their powerlessness. Sheko is Sheko, Shek Harira, Shilimbar Doste, Gothona Shege, Shela Mawis. Very badly bear, Sagashan, your Sagal Haladle, you the Begale to Ludlihi, Gaily Scooter Saden. So there was once an unlikely friendship between a lion and a squirrel. Why did they have this friendship? Well, really, it's a coalition. <laughs> it's a division of labor. The lion had 99 camels and the squirrel had one camel and they decided to tend to their camels together. This provides beneficial for lots of reasons. Why? Why? 
So one day you'd see one of them would take a rest and the other would go with the camels and go tend to pastures. So each day someone got a rest. Isn't that nice? لباح أم باسا حرض الدعان تساري تشري كنرو تشري. So here, if you can see, what we used to do historically and sometimes now is we'd have an encampment, and that's called hera, and we'd get all of our livestock and we'd make these out of a very specific branch, and that would be the enclosement that animals had to sleep in at night time. So the branch that acts as the door is the lion's job. He was supposed to open it and he was supposed to close it. Because obviously the bagal is too little. The squirrel is too small. So every day it was the lion's job to open and close Harada, the encampment. Habain Habain, another Kamid Ah, Marki Gele, Soho Yen, Ayuli Bah, Sahib, Ki the Begala Kuyri, Wan in Osa Hantegea, Yegela Kasi Warhai, Berena once on Nokondona. So one night, like a lot of nights, Lion came to Squirrel and said to Squirrel, Lion came to Squirrel and said to Squirrel, I'm coming back in the morning. I'm going to go get some breakfast for us. You just look over the girl while they're sleeping. No problem, right? Wagi murku berye. Liba hina anu waliman. Buda begalihi skudaye inu gela daanta karogo. So in the morning, when Libah promised to come back, he didn't. He was a no-show. And so Squirrel tried as hard and hard as he could, but he couldn't open up the branch to let the camels out. What was he going to do? Lion came back after three days. Remember what his promise was. His promise was to come back in the morning. But he came back after three whole days and then had the nerve to be cross at Squirrel. He screamed at Squirrel. He shouted at him. Why did you not open the encampment? Why did you let the camels get to this state? Look at the poor camels. They are skinny, they are starving, they haven't been able to go out and have any food at all because they've been stuck in the hero for three whole days. So not only was Lion super angry at the state of the camels, but he didn't wait for a response. Straight away, he just took Squirrel by the hat, by the body, <laughs> and swallowed him whole. The begali is so go bed kaba ayu aloshi li baha kegari. Wuhu na bilabe yu nuhid maha li baha gugu yu. Archo, archo, archo usin. Ah, li baha iba abadi is so go hanun la gal galanaya. Mando iga so bah. Hakan ka so baha. Squirrel found himself whole. He felt himself, he said, oh, I'm alive. There's no injuries. And he found himself in Lion's stomach. So straight away he got to work, scratching and scratching and scratching at Lion's stomach lining. This caused Lubeh much pain. And he screamed, ow, please, my friend, Squirrel, get out. Please, just get out. Squirrel looked around and said, how? How am I supposed to get out? Sanka kasobah. Ayu libah ayu guchawabi. Ya. Ma sanka duf gale. Akhas kasobah himayu sanka duf gale. Ayu yirid bagalihi. So lion said, please, just come out of my nose anywhere. Come out of my nose. And squirrel said, sorry? Your nose? With all those bogeys in it? I don't think so. I'm never coming out of someone's bogey-filled nose. Yeah. So what's the next place that Libah asked to come out of? 
Afka. Yes, his mouth. He said, please, just fine, just come out of my mouth, said Lion. Your mouth, replied Squirrel. There is no way I'm coming out of your mouth with all that spit inside. Ugh, disgusting. At this point, Lion is beside himself in pain. Please, then just come out of my bottom, he screamed. What do you think, Squirrel said? At this point, Squirrel has a bit of power. Is he going to come out of someone's bottom? No way. He replied, your bottom? With all that poo in it? I don't think so. I'm never coming out of someone's bottom. Slowly but surely, Squirrel kept scratching and scratching and scratching at the lion's stomach lining until finally Lubah couldn't take the pain anymore and passed out with the pain. The Begale. Squirrel listened for any sounds from Libah and heard none and thought it was safe to come out. He jumped out of Libah's mouth and started singing. Have you ever seen a squirrel defeat a lion? Have you ever seen a squirrel own a hundred camels? Have you ever seen a small man defeat a big man? And that is the story of how the small but clever squirrel used lion's anger against him to beat him and to finally own a hundred camels. Now this is one of my favorite stories and I'll tell you why it's one of my favorite stories. Firstly, it tells us some of the mistakes that people tend to make. Sometimes if you're quick to anger, you make really, really silly choices and you judge your friends too quickly. You might judge your family too quickly. Who took this? Who drank the rest of my drink? Who took, stole my jumper? We have all these mini little fights at home, don't we? Especially in lockdown. And yet we don't realize that we're not letting other people speak. And when you're quick to anger, you're quick to lose, as in Lubach's case. He was quick to anger and he didn't let Squirrel speak. He just swallowed him whole. And then what happened in the end? Squirrel got ahead. And also, it's a blueprint of what you should do Squirrel was patient. The whole time Squirrel was patient. He was patiently waiting for Libah to come home. He was patient with Libah when Libah was screaming at him. He was even patient with Libah when he was inside his stomach, always biding his time until the right moment. Do you remember? He listened for Libah until Libah was no longer moving. So this shows us if we're maybe not as powerful as we think we should be, and this is also available if you just want to contact us on Facebook or Instagram. We'll be able to get back to you. Hopefully we'll be able to discuss this again and read this again soon all together. Thank you so much for sitting with me and listening with me and listening to me. And I hope we'll all see each other again soon. Assalamu alaikum.